guests, good evening, and thank you for tuning in to another week with Fathers Who Care, the West Garfield Park Community Stateholders, and the West, God, the West Side Youth Council. We got them young folks working with us again today, and every time I see my young people out there, I just want to shout thank you for those young people because they be doing a wonderful job. And I'll be <laughs> remiss if I didn't thank uh, Mike, uh, Stephanie, who just got married, Amari, who, haven't, who just got married not too long ago, and I want to thank Vernicia, David, the two Shania's, and I think we got uh, Kiara, Kayla, Walter, Amari, Mashela. And forgive me if I miss some names because, you know, I'll be having some moments, some <laughs> senior moments when sometimes I need to write stuff down to remember. But, you know, as always, you know, you're watching Fathers Who Care. And, and, and we really believe in Fathers Who Care that any man that's physically capable can make a baby. But it takes a real man to be a father. And we believe in fatherhood. And we believe that it's real, real important that men are actively involved in the lives of their children. Not only do they... Can they be actively involved in the lives of their children? But they can be surrogate fathers for the children in the neighborhood. And so with that being said, we really do believe that when real men, real men, stand up, little boys must sit down. We believe that. And so we believe if we had more involvement of fathers in the community, uh, more involvement uh, and, and, and rearing the children in the community from fathers, then it wouldn't, uh, we don't believe that it would be just as much chaos as it is in the community. Now, I can't predict what will happen or what won't happen with people, without people. I just believe as a parent myself that it's extremely important that both parents are actively involved to some capacity in the lives of their children. I just believe that, David, all right? Absolutely. And so I believe with that being said, if we don't have both parents involved in the lives of their children, that's okay too. Send them on over there to fathers who care and we'll give them some nice love and affection and, and some support. And you know, fathers who care number is 773-287-5821 or law Log on to fatherswhocare.org.org. And listen, what we want to do this week, uh, this evening, we want to talk specifically about some of the things going on in our neighborhood. So we want to kind of dedicate this show with public awareness and community empowerment. Public awareness and community empowerment. Meaning, can teamwork make the dream work? The dream work. So that's a thought that we want to share with you all. And if teamwork can make the dream work, what are you doing? To make it happen. Now, we, you don't have to do it all because some folks can start off with a block club. They can start off with little block club parties. They can have a little focus group. They can do some mentoring of young people. They can go in different places and mentor young folks. They can let young folks shadow them. There's so many things, I think, David, that we can do uh, as a community to try to reduce some of this uh, 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 substance abuse, uh, senseless violence, and of course, I, I think some of these young folks are being exposed to illegal substances. And so, uh, of course, I, I'm not law enforcement, uh, but I like what the law enforcement are doing in relationship to trying to find outlets and treatment facilities and other intervention to empower young folks who may have gone astray just from peer pressure. So I think everybody deserves a chance, basically, is what I'm saying. That's for sure. You're watching Fathers Who Care, and I want to introduce you now to my guest. Of course, my guest this evening, my guest this evening is a dear, dear friend, uh, and I want to call you that because I believe in you, and I, and I love the passion that you have when it comes to empowering folks in the community. Uh, our guest, of course, this evening is David Castle. David Castle is the director uh, uh, of strategy and what's the other part you said? Uh, organizational advancement. I didn't want to mess that up. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was organizational <laughs> advancement, but it was on the tip of my tongue, yep. and I didn't want to twist it up, right? Yep. So, so now you have it. He's the director of strategy and organizational uh, advancement for the Institute for Nonviolence Chicago. So basically, I'm just going to keep it at a director of strategy for, there you go. for the institute. Yep. You kind of shorten that thing up. Now, he's also, uh, I believe, uh, a man of purpose, uh, a man uh, on a mission. Uh, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, I believe from some of the information that I read about you that you're a father mm -hmm. and that you're a parent of two daughters. But I'll get more about that from you later on when yep. you share with us uh, some of those things because I don't, I don't want to mess that up. But I want you to have an opportunity to tell us uh, some of the things that you're noted for being and for that sure. you're proud of. Sure. But you're watching Fathers Who Care. The number here is 312-738-1060. And I'd like to share this before I get too far. 
If you're out and about or you're going out and about, you must stop by Costner and Van Buren. Uh, they're riding horses out there today. I got my friend uh, Angela from the Garfield Park Community Council and the team of folks out there working. We all are together. They're doing an event tonight at, on Costner and Van Buren. Uh, it's a, a light in the night campaign, and we're doing it with sharing love. And tomorrow, there's going to be another event on Costner and Congress. And our theme is to put down the guns for some real summer fun. And it's going to, again going to be on Costner and Congress. And it's, it's entitled Clean, Green, Clean and Green Campaign for Peace. And it's going to be an old school, dusty, and stepper night. Now, for you old schoolers out there, you kind of know where we're going with this, right? We're going to play some dusty music. We're going to play some stepper music. And we're going to be cooking. And we're going to be sharing some resources. And we're going to share some love. And we're going to put a spirit in the air of peace. So I want you all to come out tonight on Costner and Van Buren. Come out tomorrow on Costner and Congress. Now, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to some and present to others my guest again this evening, David Castle of the Institute for nonviolence. So, David, tell us, tell us before we get too deep yeah. into who you are and what you're doing and all that technical stuff that you guys are doing over yeah. there at yeah. the Institute. Tell us specifically, who is David? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a good question. I often ask myself, who's David? Um, I, think, I think first and foremost, I am a father. I've got two beautiful daughters, uh, Talia and Molly. Mm -hmm. uh, they just started school yesterday. Whoa! Um, it's that time. It's that time. <laughs> seventh grade and seventh grade and fifth grade. Uh -huh. So they are they're right in the thick of it. Um, I'm also someone who is very passionate about peace and nonviolence. Okay. Uh, I often tell people that I went into the family business. I come from I think generations of peacemakers. Mm -hmm. um, peacemakers. So, I like that. Uh, I think I think that this was something that I've been um, raised to, to do. do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah. I certainly think about my grandfather and think about my father and think about my work and, and how that all is interrelated mm -hmm. and how and, and what that means in terms of uh, the work that I do at the Institute for Nonviolent Chicago, but also just how I live my life and the things that I do. Mm -hmm. So what are you most proud of in your life right now? Right now, I think um, two things. I think on a personal level, I'm, I'm extremely proud of my daughters. Uh, they have grown to be two beautiful young girls who have just a, a zest for life. Um, and I feel like, uh, you know, their mother and me have done a really fantastic job of, of doing that together. Um, I'm also sort of very excited and uh, proud of the work of the Institute for Nonviolent Chicago. We mm -hmm. have, uh, over the last uh, year, year and a half now, um, I think we've developed something really special. Uh, and with the partners on the west side of Chicago, I think that we're going to make some real change in Chicago. Okay, so you, you, you're, you're proud of, 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 your, of your children, and you're proud of your commitment to the work. And, and, and I think I heard you say that you have a passion for the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think you say your line and lineage is part of that passion or has created that passion. For sure, yeah. So that leads me to the question about your passion, of course. But before I go into the passion, we, we have, a, this is a live show. Yep. Uh, and, and so it's a live call-in show. And so when folks call in, we like to give them an opportunity to Let's do it. to ask you a question or that two, if you good. don't mind. Yeah. So I think I may have seen uh, a caller. Do we have a caller on the line? If so, caller, what's your comment or question, please? Hello? So it looked like we don't have a call. I thought they had a call on the line. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, so, so, so tell us, uh, as we talk particularly about uh, civic engagement, community organizing, and bridging the gaps and reducing senseless violence, and underage drinking on the west side of Chicago, what can we do particularly to get more young people involved in putting down the guns and sharing some love? Mm -hmm. From my perspective, I think if we're able to come together collaboratively, mm -hmm. right, uh, to provide an entryway for young people to come into pro-social environments, whether it's Fathers Who Care, or the Institute for Nonviolent Chicago, or the Garfield Park uh, Youth Council. We need ways and opportunities that people, no matter what they're interested in, can get involved. Right. Too often, we're too siloed in our work. And so when somebody comes in and they're not 
feeling this program, they don't get offered the array of things that we have available on the west side. And so people think that this is a community that doesn't have a lot to offer. Right. When right. it's the opposite. Okay. If you think about all of the opportunities for young people to get involved in sports and theater and school and music on the west side of Chicago, which might surprise people, but they're there. And we just need to be able to promote and engage and encourage young people to get more involved and have their parents support them in that involvement. And, and I'm glad you went there. And so what I like to do is, I, I, of course, I want to entertain some calls, but I, I'm really kind of uh, in a zone here. We're talking to you because you're taking the question just where I want to go. Yeah. And I feel the passion. And so what I want to do, I want the audience to know that the phone lines are now open. And we're talking specifically how what we can do uh, uh, to promote a safe and drug-free community uh, while engaging our young people, while engaging ourselves to promote and make sure that it's safe. We have a caller on the line. Uh, thank you so much, caller, for calling. What is your comment or question, please? Yes, sir. You know, this is a great show. I've been watching it. Great show. The gentleman, the gentleman, the guest, it, it's a perfect scenario for a perfect world when he says you have to have a lot of outlets for kids, you have to be a, have a mother and father, but that's not going to happen because Hispanic, uh, African-American children are born out of what, like 60, 70% of the time. So, uh, you know, where's the perfect scenario? And if people don't, don't turn in other people, I mean, you have to turn people in. You see all of these babies getting shot and killed, and nobody sees nothing. But why is it afraid? So maybe we need a, a few more policemen, a few more something in our neighborhood, security, so that we can, you know, oh, yeah, here's the guy's name. He did it, period. But no, you're not going to have that. So the perfect scenario, like a gentleman uh, suggested will and could not happen. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your comment. I really appreciate your comment. Yeah, and we, we welcome your comment. But we're going to say this here. I think we kind of alluded to this earlier. Uh, we, we understand that most parents may not be custodial. Some fathers may be non-custodial and like mothers. We don't know the situation. All we're trying to say, and, and thanks again, Carla, is that it takes us all. It takes all of us. If we really want change, it takes all of us to do something in the community to bring about change. Now, I'm, I'm not telling folks to go out there and, and try to police the community as if you're the police uh, telling, you know, going out there confronting uh, ill situations. Personally, I wouldn't want to do that myself. But I really do believe that if we really engage the young people and change the minds of some of the young people, we can make a, it can create a rippling effect. Mm -hmm. Because the way the young folks do things, they got the social media, they're connected. So when, when you touch one young person, you may touch a thousand, mm -hmm. literally. Right. Yeah, and we talk about at the Institute for Nonviolent Chicago about building the beloved community right. and the beloved community that Dr. King talked about. And certainly there are challenges to that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think as the caller said, it isn't going to be one thing or one person or one activity that changes a life, right? So if you're uh, a child with a single mom, mm -hmm. uh, what you need to see in that household is love and care and a positive role model. It doesn't have to be the father, it doesn't have to be, it could be the person across the street, a person right. down the neighborhood, but you do create an environment in which people have uh, uh, safety and security and hope in their lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly law enforcement has a place in that. We also think that organizations like ours and like yours who are mm -hmm. out in the community engaging with people uh, on their level with their with their significant needs, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't a community that, that doesn't have needs. And so we need to really support the organizations who are out there doing that work along with law enforcement and community partners. Absolutely. I, I believe it, it exactly. People united for social and environmental change. Mm -hmm. I believe if we all come together, there's nothing we can't do. Let's get another caller. Caller, you on the air. You're coming to question, please. Our guest this evening is David, the director of, uh, of strategy for the uh, Institute for Nonviolence. Do we have a caller? Yes. Uh, I have a question uh, for Dave. Dave, how are you? I'm good. How are you? 
I'm doing just fine. Babe, I got a question because, you know, I, I, I see and I know so many others see, there's so much violence in all of the communities and a lot of the violence is taking place with a lot of our youth. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what do your organization do? Is there a way that you all try to reach out and grab one neighborhood at a time to try to uh, grab a hold of where this violence is coming from to try to uh, make a difference so that it can kind of calm down some because our, we're losing our youth due to all the violence that's going on, and it appears as if no one is really really addressing the actual issues and the actual violence that's going on with our young people. And I want to hear your answer to that, sir. Thank you yeah. for the call. Yeah, and th thank you for the question. Um, currently, the Institute for Nonviolent Chicago is working in the Austin community, the West Garfield Park community, and back of the Yards community on the south side. Um, and we are, we're trying to reach out to the community through a number of different ways to begin to address the immediate needs that young people have who are most involved and impacted by violence. Mm -hmm. So we've got outreach workers who are working to engage with those most at risk to shoot somebody or to be shot themselves. Mm -hmm. We're working with victims of violence and the families of those victims to begin to say, you know what, you've just had this really traumatic experience in your life. What are things that we can do to better support you that you could change your life around? And so we've got case managers who are helping young people get back into school, get jobs, uh, get support with their substance abuse problems, get support for the trauma that they've experienced probably all of their lives. Um, and get new outlets to express themselves and express what's important to them uh, and to find somebody who can stand by them because they have lived extremely difficult experiences and our outreach workers, our case managers, our victim advocates, our community organizers, and our nonviolence trainers are all there to really support young people and the community in building that beloved community that everybody wants to have. Okay. Um, we respond to every shooting that takes place in our area in the, in the Austin community and in, in West Garfield Park and, and back of the yards because we know in that moment when that happens, people are hurting, people are upset, and people want justice and they want to be uh, heard. And so our outreach workers try and help them do that in a really positive way that doesn't involve more violence. Absolutely. So I want to thank you, Carla, for, the, uh, for that, that call and for, for your call and your question. And I want to again share with you that tonight we're doing an event on, on uh, Costner and, and Van Buren. And tomorrow we'll be doing an event on Costner and Congress. And Saturday, Cong uh, Alderman Irvin will be doing his annual parade and gospel fest at Marshall High School. Uh, for additional information, contact Fathers Who Care or the Alderman's Office. And also on Saturday, Representative Camille Lilly will be doing a Fun Fest back to school event at Loretta Hospital. And then after that, then Representative uh, uh, LaShawn Ford will be doing a Peace Walk on Central and Cortland. So there's so much going on that you can be a part of on Saturday. Matter of fact, I'll just tell you like this. Come on out on Friday. Be a part of the old school Dusty and Steppers night to put down the gun for some real summer fun on Congress and Costner, the clean and green campaign for peace. So let's get on back into some conversation here. Again, you're watching Fathers Who Care. Our guest today is David of the Institute for Nonviolence. And also I want to share this here. This is really important. Looking for uh, individuals between the ages of 16 to 21 uh, for some high school training programs. Uh, uh, that would be for providing academic and vocational certification. Uh, it's a free uh, school program, and these young folks can get involved with this initiative through the YCCS West. And if you want additional information about this initiative to uh, empower young folks in vocational certifications, give Fathers Who Care a call at 773-287-5821. Again, if you have some young folks who may have gone astray, need some additional support, and you need them to kind of get themselves acclimated in academics and vocational certification or training, give Fathers Who Care a call at 773 Two eight seven five eight two one. Okay, listen like we have a caller here. Look like we have a bunch of callers for you tonight, Dave. Let's go with the callers. Caller, you on there? Your comment, a question, please. What is violence prevention? What is violence prevention? Yeah. So, go uh, figure. Uh, you know, 
I think a lot of people have been taught and learned different ways to resolve conflicts, right? And some of those ways to resolve conflicts are through more violence. And I think when we think about what is violence prevention, it's about engaging and teaching people to resolve conflicts in nonviolent ways. Right, right. Um, and how do you do that with, uh, without losing sort of the respect and, um, and, and what you need as a person to feel good about yourself, but also to feel good and respect that person that you're in conflict with? Mm -hmm. And can you do that without creating more violence? And that's violence prevention. I love it too. Again, you're watching Father Secure. The topic tonight is unite, people united uh, to promote a safe and drug-free community while engaging others in community organizing and civic engagement. We have David here from the Institute of Nonviolence, and Dave is talking to us about some of the initiative that's going on. I want to know specifically, uh, we, I think we have another caller. Let's get another call. Caller, you on the air, comment or question? Yes, good evening. This is Miss Griffith from the South Side. Well, hello, my yeah. dear friend from the South Side. You know I love you. You are such a phenomenal person. Thank you. I wish the, this whole city and this whole country could allow you to be the role model that we need. You dress appropriate. This is what's missing. Our dressing attire, the way our appearance are, and it goes all the way to the movies. We need better productive movies with family values. We need people to understand when you come to work, you come to work like that's your business, like you're caring. So when you care, you share. But the attitude that is being presented is definitely wrong. Our kids and family deserve better than what's being seen by these big-time movie industry that makes this ugly mess. Put, put these kids and families in a wardrobe that shows family values, not, not all this tattoos and things. Because you know what? At the end of the day, we're not going to be hired. People are looking at your appearance, even in school. Go to school, dress properly. Although you may be in uniform, but dress properly with those uniforms. And that's my comment. And keep up that beautiful work. I, and I love you dearly. Thank you Thank so you much. I love you back. Boy. Thank you so much. I really needed that today. <laughs> Trust me, and I appreciate it. Uh, David, thank you so much. Let's get this other call on. I love it. I love oh. it. Come on with the call. Your comment or question, please. Oh. Okay. I... I, I have another question for Dave. Yeah. Dave, I just want my question to you is when when your when your organization reaches out to, to these different communities that, that violence and whatnot is taking place with, do the police assist you all? Do they involve themselves in the situations that you all are dealing with? Because I don't think the police really care. So you tell me. Uh, well, I'll say this. I, I think uh, there are law enforcement officers that absolutely care, and, and we work with, with a number of them on the west side. Um, I also know that um, we have different roles in the community, so our, our, our teams don't necessarily work with police. Um, we're going to do events, this one tonight, the one tomorrow night, that we're working with Fathers Who Care and, uh, west, and the Garfield Park Citizens Council. We're working together. Law enforcement's going to be there. We need a better relationship with law enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, but our teams are doing different work. We're trying to support and help people who are at the highest risk and the highest need. And they are trying to keep the community safe. And we have different strategies to do that. But I also think that they're complementary. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that we know is that uh, we can't allow justice to be served out on the street. And we need justice to be served by community and for community. And so um, we think that we are complementary uh, and we respect and, and want the law enforcement uh, groups to do their work, um, but we want them to do it in a professional and, and community-focused way. And we're there to do our work in a professional and community-focused way as well. Listen, you're watching Fathers Who Care. The time on the wall is saying that we got to wrap it up. So listen, I want to thank you, David, for coming out, for being so supportive of the work that we're doing on the West Side. And I want to encourage you to continue to do the work that you're doing because it, it's your passion, and, 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 and I think you live for it. And I think, you know, that's the good thing when you have a passion, and whatever passion God has given you, that you can do it and find joy in it and know your purpose. 
Purpose is the most important thing in the world to know what you've been called to do. So I want to invite you all out to Congress uh, and, and Costner tomorrow for old school Duster, Dusty and Stepper night. We're going to put down the guns for some real summer fun while we can commit to this clean and green campaign for peace. For additional information about some of the activities we're doing, please go to uh, fathersucare.org or call us at 773-287-5821. My people in the front are saying that we got to wrap it up. So listen, David, do you have a phone number if they want to get in touch with you before we close out? Actually, go to our website. It's www.nonviolentchicago.org. Okay, so now you have it. Now you know. Now you don't have no reason not to be involved. Thank you all, callers. Thank you who are on the line trying to get through but couldn't make it through. See you tonight. See you tomorrow night. And we're going to be doing it every Thursday and Friday and Saturday throughout the summer. And we want you to get involved. And in order to get involved, you have to call somebody. Call me. 773-287-5821. Listen, it's been a stone gas. Don Cornelius from the Soul <laughs> Train said that. You know, God bless you. Good night. Keep the faith. And we'll see you on the other side. Good night, everybody. <laughs>